Welcome back to a brand new episode of Lit Sports Online. We're doing a combination of third and goal and CCB tonight. As you can see, we have Pat from our UFC show on the table tonight. So, hey, we're going to get down to it. Let's do this. Flashback, digital dash. He used to run with a gun and a mask. He used to take so, Pat, it's great to have you on the table. Thank you for showing up on short notice. Yeah. It's going to be awesome, but let's get down to business, dude. Yeah, I'm super excited because I know everything about all of this all stuff. of this about football probably about as much as i know about ufc <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting <laughs> on, be on our great. channel here so to start out ezekiel elliott right yep. projected six year 90 million dollar contract is he going to become the highest paid running back in history this is the rumor at currently at the moment we're filming this is tuesday night it's about 9 p.m currently that is the rumor right now He's held out all preseason, hasn't played any of the preseason game, been to any of the, you know, training camp workouts, anything. So he's just been holding out for his contract. Now, Ezekiel Elliott is a once-in-a-generation running back, probably one of the best running backs out right now, next to maybe Saquon Barkley. Um, is he worth that much? <clears throat> yes and no. See, $90 million is a lot of money. Yeah. You still have to pay every single person on the team, yeah. not to mention a quarterback looking for $140 million in Dak Prescott. You still have to pay Amari Cooper. You have to keep that O-line paid. So is he worth it? Yes and no, because he is that good of a player. Somebody's going to pay him. Is it a desperation move or a power move to pay him that much? It's, to me, desperation. You have no other choice. So where, what team do you think is in a bad enough spot <clears throat> that they jump and just foot the bill? I would dare say a team like the Chargers, who's about to get rid of Melvin Gordon, who's actually on the move, which mm. goes to our next spot. Uh, Melvin Gordon, as everybody knows, has been some turmoil with the Chargers, and he could be on the move. Rumor is, is that the Ravens could be potentially interested in him. Now, to me, I don't think the Ravens need him. Would we? Would I want him? Yeah, sure. One of the best running backs to do it. He's you know, a really good player, and he's still got some juice left in him. I think on a Ravens backfield like that, could get a little messy trying to share the ball, who's getting all the carries, but he could fit in. I mean, I just don't think it's logical. And I don't think Eric DeCoste is even going to pull the trigger. So the Ravens don't need him, but it would be a it would nice be pretty extra awesome. Asset. <laughs> I mean, adding in him, the Ravens run game becomes insane with the fact that Lamar Jackson is a little more mm -hmm. of a running quarterback than they've seen in previous years. And exactly. Adding in one more phenomenal player in the backfield. It's all a win. I mean, yeah. with Lamar Jackson, too, and you know, there's a lot of questions. Will Lamar Jackson be... Will he make that extra step to take that next step in his career? And I think, yes, I think this is the year between this year and next year is the years you're going to see who Lamar Jackson really is. And that will tell the story of the our next topic, right? Yep. So <laughs> how do you think the Ravens do this season? With a healthy Lamar Jackson, because that's the most important key. He's your quarterback. He's the nucleus of that offense. Mm -hmm. If you can keep him upright – you can keep some of the injuries. The Ravens have been plagued with injuries the last few years. But if we, everybody can stay healthy, I see there is no reason why, with the type of revolutionized offense they're trying to run, I don't see why they can't make it into the playoffs again. So how do you think Lamar Jackson does if he stays healthy? <clears throat> what, what, what kind of numbers? If he talking? stays healthy, if he gets stays comfortable in the pocket and improves his throwing, he could be a fantasy football all-star. Now, I was in a draft last night where some guy picked him in the first round. I won't name names for sake of, you know, public opinion. And I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> maybe wait to like maybe the fourth or fifth round where he would have probably fell on most drafts. But Lamar Jackson's going to surprise a lot of people being the fact that he can run and hopefully being uh, banking on the fact that he's improved in his throwing. So you factor in those two things. you got a dual-threat quarterback who's probably, when he's on the field, one of the most athletic players on the field at the time. So, so that in combination with what the Ravens are known for, yes. right? Their defense. Mm -hmm. what, how do you feel about the defense? I feel good about the defense. You know, when we lost Suggs, when we lost Weddle, and mostly from the point of view of a fan, it hurt. Because it was like, these are household names. These are their names. Beloved you, players. You, yes. You should just share with your boys. You're always talking about Suggs. You're always talking about mostly how he's, you know, hopefully he can be the next great middle linebacker in Baltimore. That just didn't work out. 
But who we have back in there, Wasser, Kenny Young had a great preseason. Uh, Matt Judon stepped up immensely, and I think he's going to be a great leader. And, of course, Earl Thomas, who, in my opinion, is a way better safety than Eric Weddle. I think it just completes it. I think that there's a lot of leadership now in the defense, and I don't think their defense is going to have any problems. <laughs> nice. Well, so, since you mentioned how certain people did in the preseason, but like the team overall did well in the preseason, mm-hmm. and, and it, that, necessar- <clears throat> that is not necessarily indicative of how an individual or yeah. uh, a, a whole squad will perform throughout the season. So, what do you what do you make of the? Fantastic preseason from so I think the Ravens are something like 16 and 0 in the preseason, some crazy number like that. And you know, all those years that we were going undefeated in preseason, everybody's hyped and everything. And all those years, we just barely missed the playoffs, yeah. It's almost except like for last a, year, yeah. It's, it's almost a let down, it's, it's a, a nice build up just to let you down a little yeah. harder, you know. And for because it's fantasy week, everybody's finishing up their draft and stuff. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna equate it to something in fantasy football. Going 4 0 in the preseason is like the equivalent of Dwayne having the A plus rating in our, you know, in our fantasy football draft for how he drafted. Well, thank it God doesn't mean did. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, yes, that shows that your backups are great because that's who's playing most of the time. Those guys are not on the field playing each other. Yeah. So I mean, really, it comes down week one, week two, week three. Well, between week one and week six, you you get a feel of how a team's gonna do unless some crazy stuff like last year. When the Ravens switched up quarterback halfway through the season, and yeah. went to the playoffs. <laughs> so, what, do you, what, what what kind of Super Bowl are you looking for? I mean, it's obvious. Ravens um, in the Super Bowl. I'd love to see them get back there. I would love to see Lamar really prove a lot of people wrong and get there. And I would like to see it against a team probably like the Eagles, honestly. I would like to see Carson Wentz make it to the Super Bowl because he was a big part of that team that went to the Super Bowl. He just was injured, you know. And of course, you know the ride was finished. I feel like that's a bad, a bad situation though. It's not that far of a drive. No, I think it would be a crazy ass like, especially because like you're from closer to Philly. My hometown's straight in the middle. If you yeah. take Route One, so it'd be like they just meet in my. Like hometown you just imagine just... like this mad like crazy ninety five <laughs> interstate like. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be amazing. I would love that. People just playing chicken on the highway. Yeah, you know, it'd just be wild. It'd be like, oh my god, that'd be great. If that was the Super Bowl, that'd be super fun. Hands down. I, I grew up as an Eagles fan, mm-hmm. and and I'm not I all that. Eagles. I'm not all that invested in football myself, yeah. but I became a Ravens fan because I live here. A yeah. lot of my family's from here, same as from Philly, but I live here, you know. So yeah. now I'm a Ravens fan, but <laughs> I, I do, I did. Take a particular joy in the Eagles winning, and it would be a great game. Yeah. That would be the most fun game I can imagine, you know. And I would have no idea which way to. Yeah, to it, really it, hope it would for, be but... it would be insane. Like, so given if I your, had to give a fantasy all... scenario, yeah. right? Who actually, if you're if you're if you're a betting man, if I had to go today, if you know, just banking on if I if you know just from a logical point of view, I don't think the Patriots are going to see the Super Bowl again. I think instead there's a new dog in town. I think it's going to be the Chiefs. I think it's going to be the Chiefs versus Drew Brees in his last game ever. And depending on how that game goes, depends on if Drew Brees retires on top or if at the end of the day, I just think he's going to retire. If he gets to the Super Bowl, it's over for him. And I think, honestly, the Chiefs, I predict that they would win a game like that, but I would like to see Drew Brees, one of the best, go out on top again. Yeah. That would be cool. Even though somebody doesn't pay that close attention yeah. to the people outside you know, of the team, Drew Brees is a huge name, phenomenal player. Yeah. And he's, he's somebody you don't, you don't hear like yeah. weird crap about. He's you know? one of the most likable guys. He's, not, he's, you know, he's, not, down or... he's not hanging out in Pittsburgh no. with weird bar stalls and stuff. But Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> or, you know, he doesn't have a problem with um, ball pumps right now. So. He's a pretty straightforward quarterback, you know? Well, he's, got, he's one of the good guys. <laughs> he's like, one of the good go guys. Out on a good note. Kind of a fairy tale ending. You know? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, football any given Sunday, Monday, and Thursday now. Um, any given one of those three days, That's you know. It goes by the wayside at this point. Yeah, it's long dead. Um, you know, it's just one of those things you just don't know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of it. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm excited, you know, on behalf of LitTube to bring videos that we're talking about it because it is the fun part of the year for me. Mm-hmm. It's a fun part here for you, luckily, but we'll get to that in another episode. It's true. <laughs> UFC fights coming up. But yeah, thank you for tuning in. Um, we got a lot coming for you. As we announced actually last week, 
We are working on a project known as Beyond the Veil. The Instagram is down below, so follow that for any updates. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for a UFC video with me and him <laughs> later on this week. We got two videos. Holy crap, let's do this. Yeah, take care. <laughs> I said a weed, I'm doing five. I said a weed, I'm doing five. I said a weed, I'm doing five.